Hello there, people of the internet. This right here is kind of a, uh, what would you call it? I, I don't want to call it legendary because that sounds like very boastful, but to me, it's kind of a legendary rifle to shoot. This is the Steyr 8890. This one is from Ethiopia, RTI. You guys saw this one in an unboxing video, I'm sure, I've, if I have that up on the channel already. We do have some wind out here. This is a public range. You guys might hear some shooting off in the distance. That's fine. Uh, I do apologize for the wind noise. Not much I can do about that. We got some weather coming in. So I'm going to try and hurry this up. So this right here is chambered an 8x50 Steyr. That's a cartridge that basically does not exist anymore. This also has a flapper lock system. And it was just designed during the era of black powder. Smokeless powder is kind of questionable in these things. And I don't really want to push this, especially because it was stored in Ethiopia, which is kind of subpar storing conditions. And, well, it's 140 years old at this point, so I don't really want to push this thing. I have some fire-formed 7.62x54 Russian, and this right here is basically identical other than uh, neck diameter to... Uh, 8x50 Steyr. As a matter of fact, you can fire 7.62x54 rimmed in an 8x50 Steyr rifle because the dimensions are the same. The only difference is the bullet is a little smaller, so you're definitely going to keyhole. So that being said, actually, let me check this real quick. Nice. We might actually have some life left in this barrel. So I don't have a clip with me. All I have is a couple of rounds of 8x50 Steyr fire form from 7.62x54 rimmed brass. This right here is black powder loads because like I said I don't really want to push this rifle. So black powder loads with a 155 grain bullet. These are a 323 diameter projectile and I'm pretty sure that the uh, bore on these is like a 330 so a little bit smaller but we might actually see some relatively decent uh, relatively decent what would you call it? Accuracy. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry about that, guys. It's been quite the long day. We might see some relatively decent accuracy with this, although I'm not expecting a miracle, especially since the bore on this is quite shot out. I'm honestly very much expecting us to keyhole. So this right here, Steyr 8890 from Ethiopia. It's seen a whole lot of action and a whole lot of use in its lifetime, but God knows how long it's been since it's been shot. So we're going to go ahead and send around down range. This is a 155 grain bullet behind like 60 grains of black powder approximately. And well, with that all said, I'm just going to kind of take aim and fire. This one right here kind of makes me a little nervous. It is a black powder charge, but it's also RTI Ethiopia. Uh, yeah, wish me luck on this one. All right, I'm just going to kind of aim at the dirt. I'm going to hold my head away from this. We're going to see if it blows up. But if it does blow up and the bolt comes flying back, I don't want it to hit me in the face. So here we go, sending lead. Okay, all right. Recoil was a little bit more stopped than I was expecting with that bullet weight and that charge. So this right here, the reason why I'm out here shooting this particular 8890 is uh, this is a complete rifle. We got the extractor, ejector, we got everything that we need. Grab my brass here, have a look at that. Yeah, no signs of overpressure, no cracking or anything like that. Nice and disgusting from the various oils and leavings from RTI, which is fine. I'm pretty sure that these rifles use a heavier grain bullet, so even though we are using lighter grain bullets, we probably are keyholing. Um, let me go ahead and actually put us like a cardboard target here. We'll aim at the cardboard, Let's see if we are keyholing. This barrel does seem to have some life left in it, but I probably have to use heavier bullets for them to properly stabilize. Okay, cardboard target is officially placed downrange right there. Grab the old rifle here, close it up, and uh, we appear to be ready to go. I'm just going to aim at the cardboard, pull the trigger. I'm going to aim center mass. Let's see if we hit higher low. All right, actually, dude, that's a round hole and it's right at point of impact. No way! Oh, I might actually have myself a good usable rifle. Yeah, sure enough, dude. That is a round asshole. Okay, we might have to bench rest and actually test this thing for accuracy because that is awesome. I don't have a bench rest area out here. I don't have anything that I can use to bench rest for accuracy, so I'm just kind of offhand shooting here. I'll also have to get myself a clip for this thing because now that I know it's a good, usable, shootable rifle, dude, that is sweet. Dude, 
dude. Dude, those rounds are like an inch apart. Oh, now that is satisfying. Whenever I got this from RTI, this was actually a quote unquote and with it being a quote-unquote C-grade rifle, it was actually not functional. What had happened was the cocking piece on the back was a little bent. All I did was take a pair of reverse pliers, ones that like bend outwards versus squeezing inwards. I stuck it in there, I bent it out, and I got myself a complete rifle that seems to shoot right at point of aim. As a matter of fact, let's, let me go grab that cardboard and I'll show that to you guys. I am actually super excited about that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, those right there are round holes, which is awesome. We're not keyholing with this rifle. That is very awesome, actually. And look, they're only about like an inch and a half apart. We are shooting at 25 yards approximately, rough estimation. Maybe a little bit less. But yeah, there, there's plenty enough distance to see if the rifle's going to keyhole, and this one does not. That is phenomenal. I love that so much. You know what? While I'm out here, since I got the camera rolling, I got my 4570 Trapdoor Springfield. I'm gonna put this back out there, shoot a 4570 at it. We're gonna see if we hit high, low, left, right, see if it key holes. I'm using a 300 grain bullet with a 60 grain powder charge from the 4570. Uh, so a little bit lighter weight bullet than the Trapdoor Springfield is supposed to shoot, or at least this particular Trapdoor Springfield. Uh, I don't think that we're gonna have any issues though. Okay, got the old 4570 Trapdoor Springfield here. Load us in right there. We are cocked back. I've already made plenty of videos on these if you guys want to go see them. Let me take aim at our piece of cardboard there. Fire, and we'll see where we're hitting. Ah, dude, this has so much more power than that 8550 Steyr. Of course, that makes sense. It's a much heavier bullet. 300 grain versus a 155. Alright, so I was aiming at basically the same spot that I was with the other guys. That one hit a little bit high, but we are using a, a lighter weight bullet. Should be traveling a little bit faster than the heavier 405 grain, so it makes sense to hit a little bit higher. Uh, definitely not a keyhole, and definitely right at point of impact. So, I have absolutely no issues going to with the 8x50 Steyr. That would be cool especially now that I know that it hits right at point of aim. All right, that's pretty awesome. These are some good old guns. I'm actually quite happy, quite pleased, quite excited with my results and findings here. So I reckon that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you on the next episode. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.